Hey, Rocky Mystery. Hey, everyone. Uh, so I'm responding to Rocky Mystery's The Depravity of Relativism, something like that. Um, and I want to respond to a particular point in your video where you claim that the fact that uh, relativists, postmodernists, or, you know, that whole group of people you don't care much for, um, that they suggest uh, that that we can't actually objectively establish truth with complete certainty, that that is a contradiction in terms, and I, I don't think you say so in the video, but I'm guessing that you mean it's a contradiction because we're saying we can't prove anything, but we can prove that we can't prove anything, right? I'm guessing that's where the contradiction is supposed to kick in. Now, um, I'm not going to talk about like relativism or relativist specifically because it's it's a it's a you know it's a much broader belief than just various stripes of relativist. Um, but yes, I mean people that believe that we can't know a lot of things objectively. Not all of us uh, think that we can't know anything objectively. I mean, actually, I'm pretty sure that the vast majority of us. Uh, including all of the relativist philosophers, or most of them, will say that certain things like logic and hence mathematics, 1 plus 1 is 2, are things which are knowable because they're tautological, they're by definition true. Um, so no, it's not true that nothing is provable. Things are certainly provable. You can do a formal proof of a logical statement. And most uh, I'm sure most relativists would agree that that's perfectly permissible. The problem comes in when you consider that when you're actually making statements not about logic, but about the actual world, which is physical, you're observing it through uh, physical instruments like your eyes and your nose, all of the senses. So what you're doing is you say, the world is this way, I know this because of my eyes, but the eyes and the brain are this way because of the world. So there's a circular reasoning there. One is conditioned by the other, and you're trying to use that thing that's conditioned by the other thing to show that that thing is some way. Now, that's problematic, and that doesn't really work in an absolute sense. No, you cannot absolutely say that what you're seeing, what you're perceiving, what you're experiencing is real in the sense that you perceive it. Um, I mean, I guess you could go as far as to say you exist at this moment. I agree with that. But everything beyond that is pretty much conjecture. Um, and it could be very good conjecture. You could be very, very certain based on all of the available evidence. But that still doesn't mean you couldn't in some possibility be a brain in a bat. Um, and the analogy I would draw to this is the mathematician. As long as you, because the mathematician accepts obviously that math and logic are real, but they also say that they've proven that you cannot prove a lot of mathematics. Um, and they don't just state that, that's been proven. So it's been proven that you cannot prove a lot of mathematics. Likewise, um, I would argue, and I mean not just argue, I mean it almost seems self-evident that it's been shown that we cannot know the world objectively and prove that we know it objectively because we re rely on um, on sense organs and our processor, our brain, which are rooted in the physical world, which we're trying to prove the reality of and the we're trying to show the objective view of using the eyes and the brain. If the eyes were and the brain they don't even necessarily have to exist. Yes, the matrix, something akin to that could exist. It doesn't matter how unlikely it is. It's possible. So, no, there's no real contradiction there. Um, and then, of course, moving away from possible scenarios like the matrix that don't really get us anywhere uh, to more applicable scenarios that are more useful. 
Um, no, we probably, I would argue, aren't living in the matrix, but we're still dealing with imperf imperfect sense organs and an imperfect brain which understands the environment in a way which is not perfect. And hence, errors creep in and they produce subjectivity, which means that we don't have this objective understanding of the world. And they're not just errors, they're also just ways in which we as human beings are programmed, because we're not neutral beings. We have programming that's put into us by evolution, and all of this strongly influences how we process the data. So even if those data are objective, our understanding of them is still not objective. Anyways, Church of SDFU, I'll see you guys all later.